okay, yeah, on a bigger scale are now. I mean, there's a massive scale to win the All-Ireland. Mm. But I think your own sense of local pride is just equally as good. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's, you know, on the Armagh team, okay, you know everybody on the team, but you don't know them personally. Mm-hmm. Whereas your own club or your own local team, mm-hmm. I mean, you know mm-hmm. they're right from mm-hmm. they were born with some of them, you know, yeah. you know them right through from their childhood days. So it's that little bit more sense of pride mm-hmm. in their own local community. Mm-hmm. Um, you were saying earlier there about how <coughs> you know you, you arrange your holidays around the football dates and what Still have do. you. Um, <laughs> do you realise how the whole GAA thing is implanted so deeply in you and, and also that led you to become involved and make your own contribution to the club? Um, mm-hmm. in, how, how, you were involved then at committee level then. Involved uh, you committee. You know when all that began. Uh, about nine, in the early 80s, I was, I was about 16 or 17, I was on the uh, youth member on the committee. Um, missed out a couple of years in the ni- early 90s. Um, I wasn't on the committee then, but then got back on the committee about 93, 94. And I've been on the committee ever since. And I've held mm. the post then of treasurer of the club from 1999. Treasurer to of the today. club. That yes. can be a worrying situation in the present <laughs> financial <coughs> situations. Um, how do you see the, the future of the small rural club from a financial point of view? What What's 10 years down the line, do you think? What will your thoughts be there? Well, hopefully we'll, we'll still be okay. Um, like every, everything else in life with the current climate, the current economic climate as it is today, uh, we are noticing a few, you know, money isn't as, as forthcoming, you know, sponsorships, people buying tickets, you know, even the thought of going out to try and sell uh, tickets to raise finance and stuff like that, it's getting more difficult. We've noticed it last year. I think this year will be equally as difficult as last year. Um, from my point of view, personally, it's like holding the purse strings a bit tighter, you know, just watching every penny that's gone mm-hmm. out of the club and just mm-hmm. keeping a tighter rein on things. And hopefully, as in life, we'll get through the next couple of years, which... You're confident Obviously, enough that, that I think yeah, uh uh-huh, I think we will be okay. You will will hold your own. Yeah. Um yeah. We've had we've had bad days before financially and you know, we've got through them. Great mm-hmm. sort of spirit in the area, great working spirit in the area when things are down. Um mm-hmm. I mean people will tell you about the time that the that, although I wasn't involved myself, but the time that the they opened or they built the new field or acquired mm-hmm. the new field, things were very tight then. We got through that. Uh, then when we went to build our new club in 2003-04 mm-hmm. that year things were tight we got through that mm-hmm. and with great pride we came out the other end with very little debt behind us so mm-hmm. I've, I'm confident we'll, we'll be okay you know yeah. it'll be tight but <clears throat> I think everybody in every club and every aspect of life will be tight the next mm-hmm. few years so we'll get through it um, you've, you're involved very much with, with the club now at a, at a fairly high rank and important office and um, not an awful lot. It's it's more and more happening now where women are in these roles. Um, how long are you in this post again? From nineteen ninety nine. Uh huh. December nineteen ninety nine. How do you feel about the role of women in the clubs now, as comparison to what it was like, say, in your mother's day? Um, your mother had some involvement too in the club, I believe. Mm-hmm. But it would have been much different from yours. Yeah. Well, I suppose mostly throughout from the 80s when I got involved mostly um, the senior positions in the club were all held by the men the chairman the treasurer secretaries was held main posts were all held by the men male, male end of mm-hmm. uh, the spectrum ladies tended to be the ones that organised the functions and the fundraisers and the all the stuff that went with the club so mm-hmm. while they had a very big role in the club maybe they were looked at in a little bit of a little bit less importance. The tea makers. The tea makers, yeah. yeah. Um, and but mm-hmm. as we all know, it takes it takes everybody to get involved to mm-hmm. make the club work. Yeah. So um, you know, down the years, I think the women have come a wee bit, a wee bit more to the fore. They've got a wee bit more um you confidence. Think they're fully accepted now. In, in their yeah, areas. yeah. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. How yeah. many women would be on your committee now? Well, believe it or not, our AGM took place prior to Christmas. 
and I'm the only lady on the committee this year. No, this is temporary. I hope. This, I hope this is temporary, <laughs> but don't worry, I'll fight in your own corner. But uh, the local GA club but generally had a great representation. It has, well yeah. Up like outside that. of the committee, I mean, it's not all about just committee. Mm. I, we have subcommittees. Um, you know, mm. we have all of uh, things, aspects to the club. Um, you know, there's a, a community association in the area as well, which is it's the reverse. It's nearly all women. Mm-hmm. You know, so the two sort of combined to to help out each other in functions and mm-hmm. stuff like that. The developments over the years have you been involved in that? You know, the um, opening of your new hall, recently changing rooms and all like that. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, this uh, you know the the. This, uh, the scene of this local club now would be much different ones than when you were t- speaking there about your dad at the training earlier on. Um, what do you think of all these advancements now? Is there, it's all getting very professional, isn't it? Is that a good thing? It has its good points and it had, has its bad, bad points. Um, mm. Whenever I first started going to the, to the football and stuff like that, and as you said, like there, was, there was no proper field. Or, you know, we didn't own our own field for a number of years, but I had to just... Mm-hmm. It was just generosity of the local people who give us a field. We also just had the use of the local forestry at hall. We didn't have our own facilities, mm-hmm. um, youth clubs and stuff like that. I remember going to youth clubs and all the functions were just held in the forestry at hall. Um, professionalism has come in a lot into the sport. And as I say, it has its good points and bad points. It's To me, it's got a wee bit too competitive. You know, everything now, it's, it's all money and it's all, mm-hmm. you know, physios and it's all you know to a lot of a lot of it a lot of the sort of just the general kind of a bit of fun has gone out of it mm-hmm. everything is about winning mm-hmm. and as i said earlier on if a lot of teams a lot of times the team don't win heads are down and it's nearly a given up mm-hmm. session whereas years gone by when dad was playing that when they were never used to winning so they just they played for the enjoyment of it just came out the following yeah. sunday and started it was the again. enjoyment of uh, it and it was representing you just your club mm-hmm. and win mm-hmm. lose or draw it, it's not that it didn't matter to them of course they'd like to <coughs> win but i think that competitive edge has come into everything not just mm-hmm. the ga but it's come into every walk of life yeah. Yeah. well from what you're saying there you've given massive contribution over the years uh, uh very professionally and Voluntary is the is the big word we use there. Voluntary. How do you think the professionalism that's creeping into the GAA now? How is that going to sit beside the volunteers? Have you any thoughts on that? Well, again, I think if they go down the route of, uh, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about paying players and paying managers and paying top dogs and in top positions. I think if that, personally speaking, if that is the route they take. I think they're going to lose the whole uh, meaning of the GAA because if one person's getting paid in a club and another's not getting paid, that's where the conflict starts. I mean, we all give our time free, not just myself, but every other member of the committee um, and outside of the committee, all the club members give their time free. There's a lot of people over there training the underage teams, don't get paid. So if, if they start to pay one person, I think they'll have lost the GAA. Mm. I think mm-hmm. the whole ethos of the of the whole community spirit mm-hmm. and all will have gone, yeah. because you'll find they'll start to take it'll, it'll be a case of they're gonna have to take outsiders into areas to train and to and I know a lot of clubs are already doing that, but I think if you know an achievement is nicer if it's all sort of within your own local area, and you're not having all down the years we've had players maybe coming from just outside the area, but most of them would have you know parents or grandparents who are originally from this area and have some connection back to it that's fine but i think if they go down the route of, of mm. pain and mm-hmm. all this sort of jargon i don't think it'll work right. <clears throat> thanks jacqueline the uh, <clears throat> we talked to some of the older people and um, some of them remember very clearly this area having no no ga club in it um quite a i think the 60s and this fifties and the sixties didn't have a football team in it and, and now it has and it seems pretty well established now at the moment. Do you think that's an advantage to the area having a having a GAA club in it? Uh, well you have any thoughts on that? Most definitely. Mm. Um again speaking for myself, um the GAA club to me has has kept the area together, has kept the people in touch with each other. I mean because it's a rural area you know, you could sit in the house here and not see one person from one end of the week to the other, 
But because you're involved in the GEA, if you're not over at the field, people's calling here to collect tickets or people's calling with money or with queries, there's hardly a night goes by that there's not somebody in my house here to do with something involved mm -hmm. in the, mm -hmm. involved with the club. Um, and to me, that keeps everybody in touch. It keeps you know, neighbours and friends in contact with each other. And everybody has such a busy life now and they're going all over the place and working and whatever. And, you know, little things like the club, like the functions that's run in the club, uh, no matter how small they are, it's that sense of community. It keeps everybody mm -hmm. in touch with each other and, mm -hmm. you know, in touch with all their friends and neighbours in the area. Mm -hmm. You know, there's people in this area who mightn't see, you know, a, a neighbour from one end of the month to the other. They go over there to functions like the quizzes or like we we things we run every month, especially the eld, you know, the more senior people of the club, and that's their outlet. Mm -hmm. So not just for people who are, you know, the football. It's not all about the football teams. It's it's the wider yeah. circle and the mm -hmm. whole community. Mm -hmm. So certainly, and especially with no school in the area as well, it keeps the kids together with the youth club and stuff. It keeps yeah. them all mm -hmm. together because they're all at different schools. Yeah. And so again, you know, they don't get to know each other only through the club. Mm -hmm. So certainly it's a hub of the community. So <clears throat> despite all the difficulties ahead, financial difficulties that might arise, this professional volunteer conflict that might arise, you still see a future for our local GAA club? I certainly mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I definitely, I mean, I, you know, I would, well, I know I speak for most of the, anybody in the committee or anybody that's always heavily, heavily involved in the area for so long. I mean, I don't think we would ever let the club fold. Yes, we've had bad times. Yes, we've had lack of numbers in teams with you know, teenagers going off to America and Australia and stuff like that. But we always seem to get through it. There's always a panic that so many's heading away off on, for a year working wherever. But every year we seem to get through it. And I, can, I, you know, I can't see that stop and it'll, it will continue on. So there we had the thoughts of Jacqueline Rafferty. Um, a very professional volunteer for the local club and uh, Jacqueline's words there are very courageous and encouraging for the future and um, if we have more people like Jacqueline around I think someone will survive. Thank you.